Okay, have you ever missed a deadline? Because I just did and the deadline was Christmas. Let me explain. I wanted to create a PCB batch in the shape of a tree that I can hang on the real tree, but somehow I've heavily underestimated how much time it will take me to create the design. And if you add time needed for PCB manufacturing, assembly and shipping, we end up here. So today is end of December, almost week after Christmas. No one is actually thinking about Christmas anymore and I just received the package. So I just hope that you can use some of the tips from today's video for your non-Christmas designs or perhaps wait 12 months and use it for the next Christmas. So let's get started. Also if it's not obvious, this video is sponsored by PCBWay and if you use the link down in the description you can get 10 PCBs like this one for free. You only need to pay for shipping. So let's get back to the tree batch. When designing a PCB you have at least 4 different colors that you can use. There is a color of the board itself which is this brownish color and it's a little bit translucent and actually not very much used for the designs. Then there is a color of exposed copper which actually doesn't have the color of copper because it's oftentimes plated with either silver or gold so the color would be silver or gold. Then there is a color of the solder mask. And when you for example say that the PCB is white like this one you mean that the solder mask color is white. And that's because the solder mask usually covers most parts of the PCB. For the solder mask you can choose from quite a lot of different colors and here are a few examples. The common colors are black, white and green but you can for example choose to use pink or maybe blue, depends on your case. This one is transparent so you can see the color of the board. Then there is a silk screen layer which in this case is black but for example for this green board it's white. You can use other colors than just black and white but it will cost you more money so you'll stick with the default ones. There is one more color that you can use and that is if you don't use the copper layer but still use the solder mask and it's very visible around those traces so there is no copper around those traces and there is a solder mask still being applied so you can see that the color is a little bit darker green. However with the white solder mask you don't see the color change that much actually it's almost invisible so this effect depends quite a lot of how how much opaque or how much transparent is the solder mask. Now we've already seen how my tree looks like but when I was thinking about the design I wanted something to have very complex shapes where a lot of different traces on the board but mainly to serve some kind of artistic purpose. Not being functional but looking nice basically. So here is one example where the traces looks like a circle or here is another one where the traces actually looks like a tree. So this was actually my starting point. I wanted the tree to be in the shape of the Christmas tree but at the same time being filled with all those branches at the same time resembling and acting like individual traces. However drawing this by hand in KiCad would probably take me too much time so I've decided to use another tool and that one is called Houdini. And Houdini is fully procedural node based 3D tool and hopefully we can use some of the built in algorithms to simulate the PCB like structures. As a starting point I will create a grid and on this grid I want to actually define two different points. So the first point will be a start point and that might be some point on the bottom of the grid that I will select right now and actually name this group to be the start point. And in the same way I will create a second group which I will call the end point and select one of the other points for example the one in the top right corner. And that's this one. Then I can use the node called find shortest path to find the shortest path between the start point and the end point. And while some path was found it looks nothing like the final PCB so let's just try to fix it. As a first step we don't want to have just one path, we want to have as many paths as possible. So instead of defining one end point I will actually define all the points to be end point. And in the find shortest path I will change the output to be from any start to each end. And now every point on the grid is being connected to the start point. I also want to have some diagonal lines so I will add the node called connect adjacent pieces. I will edit before I define any group and inside here I will select connect points and increase the search radius until I see those diagonal lines appearing like so. Now when I switch to the last node you will see that we have a shape that kind of resembles a tree, right? We just need to put it inside the tree shape and maybe have more branches and that's exactly what I did. I've actually created a second grid and distorted it in the shape of the tree, like so. And then for the first grid I just put much more points and created an intersection between those two groups and deleted the points that were not part of the original tree shape. So I end up with something like this. I've used the same connect adjacent pieces to get those diagonal lines and then define the points. So the start points are actually a few of the points down there, down in the bottom of the tree shape. And the end points are all the other points. And then I've used the find shortest path to create something like this. If I hide the points you can see it better. That looks something like a tree but hopefully at the same time looks a little bit like a traces on the PCB. But it still looks very simple and you don't need the simulation to draw diagonal lines, right? 
Thankfully there is a way how to tweak how the find shortest path looks like and that is by adding the point cost attribute. And you can imagine it like casting each point will cost you some money so you want to avoid the expensive ones and only go for the cheap ones. And that's exactly what's happening. So as a first step we will actually add the cast attribute and I will just randomize it. So I will add a new cast attribute and set it to be random. So it looks like this just the random values going from 0 to 1. If I select the find shortest path and enable the point cost attribute you can see that now the branches are very randomized and it actually it looks more like a tree now, but it's very chaotic. So instead of actually randomly setting the cast attribute, we can manually set it or maybe perhaps paint it. So I've created an error grid and actually painted the cast attribute to simulate or resemble the tree shape of those main branches. So the blue areas are the places where I want those branches to be at the first place and the red ones are the most expensive ones. So it will try to first fill in this shape and then it will also reach out to the other places. And you can kind of see it if I show the find shortest path like an overlay. So you can see now there is this new tree shape and this is the paint attribute. So it's trying to first go inside those main blue branches. I can still paint this cost attribute. So if I decided I want to have another branch here, I can just paint those values, those small cast values. So the very cheap places to go and it will try to put some branches in here first. Or I can do the opposite. I can just say don't go there in the first place and just stay outside. So this is the final shape after drawing the cast attribute. I've still added a little bit of randomization and that's mainly affecting those end pieces, those very expensive areas. And I think that I'm pretty happy with the result. By the way, if you add the carve node, you can actually animate the growing of the tree, which I think looks pretty nice. Something like this. I've also noticed that adding the resample node will make it look more like a real tree, but less like PCB, so I haven't used this version. However, I wanted to have a hole on the top of the tree and I didn't want the traces to intersect with the hole, so I created a very small sphere and just removed those points from the final shape, which means that now on top of the tree there are no traces. In the very similar way, I've also marked the places where the six LEDs will be most likely placed and the barrier holder and removed those points as well, so this was actually the final shape of the tree. If you are wondering how do I know the size of the battery holder and the LEDs, I've actually taken a snapshot from KiCad and then, of course, measured it inside Houdini. I've also created the board outline in here because getting the rounded corners inside KiCad is very, very hard, but very, very easy in Houdini. So I can just play with one slider and get the rounded corners in the size that I want. As you might already tell, there was actually very little work done inside KiCad. The schematics is as simple as it could be. There is just one battery cell and six LEDs, no resistors whatsoever. I just googled if I can use the battery cell without resistors and I think that the common answer was, yeah, just do it. Uh, later on I've added this connector because I wasn't able to get the battery cell holder in time. It would add a few more days for the PCB assembly, so I've decided to not go with the battery cell holder and instead just put in those two pins for now. The PCB is quite different for the front side versus back side. So on the front side, I've imported those traces from Houdini and then added this zone. So it's filling the outside areas of the copper. And the copper is actually exposed only for the places where there should be the some soldering or where there should be a connection. So it's only visible for the barrier holder and for the individual LEDs. Otherwise, the front solder mask is covering all the copper. But since the solder mask is slightly transparent, you should still see the traces. And it took me a while to realize that inside the 3D viewer, you can actually go to preference preferences, go to preferences, and for the individual colors you can lower the opacity, which is this slider. By default I think it's set to 100%, so you wouldn't see those individual traces, but that's not how the final PCB looks like. On the back side of the board, the copper layer is actually filling the whole area of the board, but the drawings from Houdini is being imported into the mask. So where there is a mask, the copper layers is actually being exposed, and if I open the 3D viewer, you should see that the traces are very visible, being gold. You can also see that I've put the sill screen over the exposed copper and that's usually something that you want to avoid. And I will save you some googling and tell you that everyone agrees that if you want to put the silk screen over the copper, I mean over the exposed copper, the best way to do this is to first ask your manufacturer. Because sometimes it might be fine, sometimes it might be problem. In any case, if you do want to do this, you should definitely tell the manufacturer to not remove the silk screen from the exposed copper because a lot of times they will just do it. As for my case, the silk screen sticks fine, but it's just a little bit blurry, so next time I will probably avoid this. Speaking of silk screen, I wanted to break the uniformity of the geometric shapes by having something written by hand, so I've taken my favorite brush pen and just put it on the paper, scan it, and then put it back into KiCad. 
and for that there is this image converter utility. The important part is to set the correct dimensions and of course if wherever you want to import it as a solder mask or silk screen. You only have option for front but once you copy this into clipboard and paste it in KiCad, you can then open the properties and set it to the back layer if you want to. I really like how the batch turned out. I especially like the front side where the individual traces are hidden behind the solder mask and they are like semi visible. Again there is no battery holder for now because that would add 10 more days for the PCB assembly and I didn't have 10 more days, I was actually 5 days behind. Also here is a batch from PCB Way. you can see the LEDs are changing colors, blinking and doing all sorts of rainbow stuff, I really like how it looks like. It also has a switch and of course a battery holder. And that's it for today's video, if you have any questions please put those down in the comment section and I promise that the next time I will try to come up with the Christmas design before Christmas. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon, thanks and bye.